Thank you, Kathy. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this, the 12th of July. It's ordinary time, but I can't remember if it's the 6th or 7th Sunday, so bad pastor. Anyway, glad that you're here. A couple of things to know. If you get tired of standing and want a chair, we have that back door open there so you don't have to worry about coming forward and being on camera. If you want to come forward and be on camera, we don't mind at all either. But, you know, if you do need to go in the building for either chairs or restroom, that back side door should be open. And if it's closed, it wasn't me because I did open it. I really, really did. Um, also, this morning, communion, we're trying something we've never done before. We ordered these prepackaged communion kits because of the pandemic. And I tried filling with one this morning. And uh, what I'd recommend is that during the offering time, you go ahead and work on it because there's two layers. There's a very, very thin layer of plastic over the wafer or host. It's clear plastic. You need to peel that off. And that was how you access the host or bread. And then to go to the juice, yes, I said juice, not wine. It's pandemic, but I can still picture all these old Lutheran pastors rolling over in their graves right now. But anyway, then there's a foil over the juice, and you peel that back. But I would monkey with it during the offering time rather than right when it comes time for communion, just because it is a little bit putsy. Also, we have a mistake in the bulletin. Uh, the whole first reading is printed, and that's not the, supposed to be the case. Um, Natalie's actually going to be starting with verse 10. So when it comes to the Isaiah reading, skip verse 1, try to get your eyes to 10, and follow along with that as well. If you brought offering, we have a couple of options. During the time of offering, you can come forward and place your offering in the box right there. And, you know, you can easily do that. Or if you want to, after service, uh, please feel free to go in into our drop box, and that's propped open as well. We also have our giving kiosk as well. You can use that too. And of course, if you have your Give Plus app, you can use that too as well. Then one more thing, if you are here this morning for the meeting about worship or Christmas in the barn, yeah, it's July, but we're still going to be talking about Christmas in the barn. Um, why don't we meet at the picnic table, unless it gets too hot, then we can go inside. But on the picnic table, uh, thanks to the wonderful um, gardening skills of Jane Hamlin, we have lots of zucchini and summer squash for your taking. Please don't be shy. Um, it's there to be enjoyed. So, you know, a lot of us don't have gardens. It's your chance to grab some zucchini, make some zucchini chocolate cake or zucchini bread. I mean, I suppose you could eat it as a vegetable, but why? Um, enjoy it instead. Anyway, I think that's it for the announcements. We'll continue with the confession and forgiveness that's found printed in the bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We place that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and your spirit lead us. So we live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let's live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first song is Morning Has Broken. Blackbird has 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue with the reading. Isaiah 55, verses 10 through 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but I shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst forth into song. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for an, a memorial and for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. When the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for was sown in good soil, this is the one who bears the word, hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Had I foresight enough 
or a courage to change at the last minute, I would have had us sung Joy to the World as our opening song this morning. Yes, joy to the world, even though it is July, far from Advent, far from Christmas, what we have today in our readings are accounts of unbridled joy, pure, unadulterated joy. And isn't it good to have joy proclaimed now, more so than ever, in these times that are so different from what it was just a year ago? The Word of God comes, my friends, this morning and tells us that great joy abounds. It abounds for each and every one of us as an incredible gift. Now, it's easier to see the joy in the first reading when we hear about the trees of the field clapping their hands and being sent out in joy. But the second reading, the gospel reading, the joy is not so obvious, but it's what it's all about. But first, a word on parables. Jesus uses parables to set the apple cart, which is a cliche my kids would not understand. But the idea of a parable is to upset expectations, to turn expectations upside down, to remind us that often God works in ways that are very, very different from the ways of the world or from our ways. When Jesus uses a parable, everything's supposed to be turned upside down. It's not going to make sense often in our ears, which is a great relief to me. The other idea of parables is we're supposed to put ourselves into the parable. It's supposed to be our experience. We're supposed to identify with one of the characters of the parable. Well, the parable today, the parable today only has one character. It's not the parable of the soils. It's the parable of the sower. Just one. Just one character. And so what happens with that is that we have to identify with this crazy, crazy, crazy man who just spreads seed everywhere. We want to make it about the soil. And all too often we do, but again, it's not the parable of the soil, it's the parable of the sower. Not the soil, but the sower. But if you're like me in past years, you've kind of tried to see, okay, what soil am I? Am I the shallow one? Am I the path? Am I the rich soil? We have four options, and the reality is we are all four options, but again, it's not about the soil, but about the one who sows the seed. And how I do not want that to be so. Back behind that shed, I'm growing a vegetable garden. It's a brand new garden. The soil was just tilled this year. And you know what that means? It means forever I'm fighting new grass, new grass, new grass, new grass. I can spend hours and hours pulling weeds and turning around. It looks like I've done nothing at all. And yet I have this mode of self-righteousness about me because I know that next year and the year after and the year after the year after the soil will keep on getting better and better and better with all my toil and work and we kind of think that about ourselves but it's not the case we're going to remain a mix of soils but again it's not about us but it's about the sower so it's like this pretend that we don't have a lawn here and we hire Jesus himself to come and plant the seed. Try to picture Jesus in your mind with a big, big rucksack of grass seed. And now picture him spreading seed right here in the parking lot, on double T, on the roof of the building, inside the building, everywhere. We might say, hey, Jesus, you're crazy. What's going on here? The seed's not going to grow on the parking lot. The seed's not going to grow on the sidewalk. The seed's not going to grow in the building. It's not going to grow on the roof. And Jesus would say, hey, there's seed enough. You just never know. And that's the joy of today's reading because God's love is enough for each and everyone in the world. There's more than enough Jesus to go around. And we have to, as sowers, sow that love of Jesus without discrimination, without abandon, without worry. Well, we've lost sight of that. You know, as a parish pastor, then as a synod staff, and back in the parish, 
I hear all kinds of things about how to grow a church, what church growth involves, and I have to laugh because it's always been about the soil, the soil, the soil, the soil, the soil, ignoring this parable when Jesus says, hey, don't worry about the conditions. Worry rather about spreading the love and spreading the word without abandon because you never know where the seed is going to land. You really don't. But there's enough of God's love to be wasteful with it, to share it without reservation, to give it all away to everyone we encounter with our words and with our deed. Now, if you're like me, you've seen trees grow up in rocks of old foundations of houses. You've seen, had to pull weeds from sidewalks, have you not? A seed will grow wherever it will grow. It's not up to us. We really don't know what all good soil is or where all the good conditions are. But when we cast that seed of love, that seed of faith, that seed of Christ's love indiscriminately to everyone, it's going to take root somewhere. And when it does take root, good will happen. It really, really will. So let's not be afraid to share that love. Now, a word of caution. When I think about religion in the United States, what comes to mind, in my mind often, is while well, the media, the entertainment industry portrays our faith. And it's not always portrayed in a good light. It's portrayed often as a list of rules, as judgmental, and as political. How attractive is that, huh? It's not attractive at all. What we're portrayed as what's supposed to be, abounding joy and love, mercy, grace, forgiveness, fellowship, all those great, great, great things. What if we're portrayed like that? Well, it'd be absolutely wonderful. You see, that's our calling. We're supposed to go sow the seed of faith in that mode of operation of love, mercy, compassion, grace, and forgiveness over and over and over again, not just to a few who we think will get it, but to absolutely everyone whom we encounter. Some of the seed will fall on good ground, some of it won't. But again, the reality is, in great joy we can see, there's more than enough Jesus to go around for everyone. So cast that seed without abandon, without reservation, without love, and go out in joy, because we've been called children of God. And that's the joy we need now in these times. Amen. We'll continue with the next hymn. Thank you.
Please pray with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into ministry with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for the world. For all the blessings of this life, we give thanks to you, Creator God. For families, friends, colleagues, neighbors, and strangers who nurture us, that the love of God may grow within. That your love, your word, like a seed, may grow to produce in us good fruit. Lord, in your mercy. For the leaders of various nations and cities, that they may lead with strong hearts and gentle hands and generous spirits, with compassion and mercy, with wisdom and grace. May they reflect your guide, may they reflect your will guiding all their actions and decisions. Lord, in your mercy. For those who serve in harm's way, those who live in dangerous places, those who live in areas of war and strife, those who live in fear, those who worry about um, employment, bills, food, and struggle just to find dignity in life. May your grace bring peace and safety to all people, one to another, Lord in your mercy. For those who suffer from any illness or disease of mind, body, or spirit, restore these and all those we carry in our hearts to fullness of health. Health as you, health as only you, O oh God, can bring. May your mercy shower each of us with healing mercy and love. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are dying and for those who have died, send forth your comforting love. Give solace to those who mourn. Console those who grieve. May your grace surround us like a mantle upon our heads, a shawl upon our shoulders, a hand to hold our hand. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, we'll continue with our offering. And again, as I said at the beginning, it might be time for you to start fiddling with the communion pack to get the bread um, out. And also, we have the offering box here. Thank you, Kathy. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is firm as the heavens. 
water and word, wine and bread. Those are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. In the night which betrayed our Lord Jesus, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup's new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We praise you, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey. If you are at home, when you give the bread, say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And when you give the juice or wine, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. So for the congregation gathered here, please get your bread ready. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Go ahead and eat. Go ahead and get your juice ready. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Go ahead and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you in keeping this love now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and be united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Before the benediction and last song, a couple of announcements. If you were here last week sweating it out with all of us gathered here, I promised that Steve Smart would have a video last week for us. We don't have the numbers figured for you. We haven't got them back from Denise yet. This week, I'm sure we'll have the video ready, and Steve can give a full report of what's going on financially here at Cross. I also want to do thank the men's group because they have donated to us this computer. Uh, we needed to have a separate computer uh, for recording the services. We had been using mine back and forth, and there were some actions with the stuff freezing, so we we're hoping this computer upgrade will make sure that we no longer freeze and that we have a better production as well. Um, also, we're almost, almost ready to stream. We just have to have Baldwin Lightstream come, a hole drilled into the wall, and then we'll be live now and forever every time we meet, which will be absolutely wonderful as well. But again, thank you all for your participation and your support during this strange, strange year of 2020. This congregation rocks more than other congregations. I'll say that publicly on YouTube for all the world to hear. You guys are the best. And so thank you for being such wonderful folks. Keep up the good work. Again, there is produce on the table. Make sure it goes because Jane doesn't want it. Otherwise, she wouldn't have brought it here, right? And so please take some home with you. And then also, again, if you are here for the meeting about uh, Christmas in the barn, uh, we'll meet at that same picnic table where this zucchini and summer squash is. And so um, just mill around there, and we'll, we'll gather together as soon as we can gather together. Um, any other announcements I should make known? If you are in church council, please don't forget we have a meeting tomorrow evening. And I actually think I was telling Pamela that I think it's going to be the first meeting since I've arrived that's actually going to be a normal meeting. We've always had big, big issues every month to discuss, and so, like, wow, I don't know what we'll do. Um, it'll be good, and so we might be home in an hour. We'll see. Um, Kay, oh, thank you. If you want prayer partners, Kay is back there in her vehicle as well, 
It's, um, I can't see, it's a blue Chevy of some kind. So if you need prayer, go to her afterwards. Thank you. And where else are you going to meet? There's me. Who else? Prayer ministers. Raise your hands. They're listed in the bulletin. The prayer ministers are listed in the bulletin. So, so go find a prayer minister that's listed in the bulletin, and you well, she'll be good. All right. Thank you. All right. Benediction and last hymn. I have to say it's warm up here. Yeah. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Yeah.